right, my friends, we're Lala live and recorded. So we're both, okay? We're live and we're recorded. Today we have a special guest, Nicole Padilla. Padilla. Uh, <laughs> you pronounce it pretty well, Padilla. No She's accent been, here. How long did it take you to to figure it out, like precisely? Few years, yeah. Really? Because Padilla. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Welcome to the show. This is Christian Podcast Latino. We mm -hmm. like I love this setting where we have in-person episodes because we do a lot of you know like talking mm -hmm. to people on the online from other places and they're like scholars or you know book authors or things like that. Yeah. But there's something about just like the local connection. Mm. Yeah. Right? It's like Normal a we're people. missing something. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like at the end it's like oh how we can be friends come over or you know we invite each other but never never happens our lives get so busy yeah and they're so far yeah. but I mean yeah. we're literally neighbors yes yes and I'm just a regular person I don't have yeah. a book but hey let's talk about my story <laughs> 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 yeah maybe one day <laughs> yeah I mean you never know right uh okay so let's start right there Millie. I mean I don't know if you want to introduce how you met because you were doing this uh love Costa Mesa, something like that. We connect yeah. like this, Beto. Mm. No, yes. I, I yeah. feel like yeah. God's people, it's amazing. I think God mm -hmm. prepare our hearts and it's when he's working, he use his people and he just mm -hmm. uh, may make us be in the same time to come together for a reason, for his purpose. And we were serving. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was Yeah. Volunteering uh your mom's place. We were making her jar beautiful. And I was so blessed because uh they did it at my house too. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> I was giving and I received, like, okay. But that's how it works with God. Uh -huh. And yeah, they sh you guys show up to volunteer the day and I just hear that you were new in the community, right? Yeah. In here in Costa Mesa and she, she was looking for opportunities to serve. And like yeah. perfect. And I invite you to the podcast. Like let's 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 oh. keep in contact, but we have we're like friends in Facebook. And then you send me a text message like, "Hey, I can't wait to listen to the next podcast." Like, wait a minute. Uh, we are missing one podcast with you. Let's do one more, right? <laughs> so you can listen to yourself. Uh, and then <laughs> and then I was listening to your husband and what he does. And you can share a little bit about that. And I was so amazed. Like, oh, wow, guys, you really are working for God's kingdom. And mm -hmm. I think today we're going to learn a lot from you. Mm -hmm. And I just yeah. feel like we're going to receive a word to, today, Beto. And... Mm -hmm. And love it. I, yeah, yeah. I love it. So that. God, God, I know God used you, and I just want to receive and learn from you today. Mm, thank so you. Thank you so much for coming for your time. Yeah, you are a beautiful light in the world. You know, I was looking mm -hmm. through your Facebook, like how people think the Christians are boring. Look at her life. They oh my not. gosh, <laughs> this is so much fun. Uh -huh. You know, she's sharing Jesus everywhere and around people all the time and food around. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for that humble and so gracious uh, introduction of myself. And I really appreciated meeting you too. I think serving alongside together, there's nothing that brings you closer together mm -hmm, than mm -hmm. serving, being on the ground floor, digging, getting dirty in the dirt together that I think just kind of brings us all. We're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. We don't know what each other's statuses are, where we come from, but we just know we all have the same mission and purpose, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is to love our neighbors. And yes. so we got to love others, but then I was like, oh, I really like her. <laughs> I, was like, I want to be her friend. And so here we wow. are. Wow. How long ago was that? <gasps> oh, man. Jeez. I don't know. Like... Mm, that, months that must have if been not a year in may <laughs> well may, <laughs> may is when second. they do the big event was it part of the big event mm -hmm. like the i think post, so like, yes the love yes. poster mesa okay yeah, yeah that's in may so may 2024 that must have been mm -hmm. yeah then yeah. wow so you're a little bit like millie because millie is like beto i met a new friend you know and she's she's always looking for new friends <laughs> so i think i think you're maybe wired kind of the same, same. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah i'm yes. an extrovert 
Oh, yeah. You know, my introvert part, I think I killed it long ago. <laughs> because we both have, you know, yeah. the two. But um, people give me so much energy. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And, uh, and if, I'm, yeah. if I'm at my house just cleaning, it's fine. But I get, like, moody and mad. I just need people around me. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're... Uh, that's me. That's literally me. I'm like, oh, I don't really want to do this. But hey, if, if we do it all together, oh, I'm down. I mm. just love being with people. People do not drain me. They fill me up. I just, there's something about someone else and hearing their story and their life and just being in their presence that just fills up my heart, my soul, my mind, everything. Mm. It like helps my mental health, which is funny because that's even one thing is, you know, even therapy says, um, my husband is a licensed marital family therapist. And so even he helps his clients to go spend time with a friend that'll actually help you yeah, it's yeah. interesting that god created that in us to desire mm -hmm. that connection mm -hmm. and so i think maybe extroverts are just more open about it like yeah i need people introverts do need people too but they love that maybe smaller connection that mm -hmm. small group more one -on -one, intimate more intimate and they're they're really deep and introspective that's why i have really good introverted friends because i'm like i need you i need you to ask those thoughtful questions because i just want to hang out and have fun and drink coffee and eat and they're like nicole how are you doing tell me your heart mm. what are you learning what are you reading and then now they're getting all deep and i'm like oh i needed this right mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, that's cool yeah. that would be better ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, i think you too you're you're like that too you know but mili for sure can get deeper sooner right but that's what i'm looking for oh, okay, i'm you know? so open sure. yeah that's what i'm looking for too you know like if it's if I have new friends, uh, to me, like a friend is when, I don't know, when, when you get to the point of even like maybe fighting with someone, right? And it's like, okay, now we're, we're what do you say? We're coming up against one another. Having a conflict. Yeah, yeah, conflict. And I think that's good because that means you're knowing each other even more. And I think that's, and well, one question I want to ask you is like, how did you end up here? Because you said you were new to... To Costa Mesa, but before that, I wanted to say, uh, with the whole uh, like friendship, yeah, I think America needs more friends. Mm, preach it, right? <laughs> I I think you know when I look, I mean, I've been here twenty years, and I think I don't know if it's just Orange County or if it's harder in Orange County than maybe in other places. But having true friends and like deep friendships, it's hard, you know, because everybody wants to live on the the surface and they don't want to open up yeah and if you don't open up it's just it's shallow right and it, it doesn't lead to, to i don't know a deep connection with somebody else yeah and that's what i've been maybe just noticing you know oh america needs more friendships mm. just needs more people to connect and go and have fun it, it's always i don't know it's always seems like really superficial you know like yeah we're gonna hang out but what am i gonna get from this, you know, it's always networking or something, which is great, but business. You know, yeah. Mm. It's just business. Right? Yeah. So anyways, how did you end up here? <laughs> what, what's your story? Yeah. So we moved, I say we, my husband and I, we've been married for 15 years as of this year. Okay. And we lived in Los Angeles. He mm -hmm. bo He's born and raised LA. He thought he was going to die in LA, like West Coast, wow. like Tupac. <laughs> like he's like, you know, he's going to, he's just going to, you know, live and die LA. And then, um, and I grew up in Long Beach. So Long Beach, I oh, feel like wow. is interesting because, you know, if you're not familiar with this area, you know, being in Orange County, there's just the beach life. There's just, it's a little bit more chill here. And then you're in LA, it's the hustle and bustle. There's a lot of traffic. And then Long Beach is that beautiful in-between. Mm -hmm. And so then I grew up in this in-between, always went to the beach growing up. We met actually in the church. We met um, at a friend's birthday party. You know, I can share about that later if that comes up. But, um, and so then, and we get married right after I graduate college. And so we build up our lives serving the church, um, serving God in, L in the LA area. And the pandemic happens, everything's closed. And we're like, well, we have a conviction 
uh, we need to go on our date nights every week. Weekly date nights are super important to us. And preach so like, it, preach it, preach it. Hablanos Jesús. <laughs> oh, trust me, that has made a huge, huge difference. If you want to make one change in your marriage, go on a weekly date night mm -hmm. or even just add a date night just in some sort of like if it's even if you start monthly, then every uh, every other like it's just made a huge, huge difference. Um, and so as we're looking for our date nights, we're going, well, wait. Every, everything's closed in LA. You can't even go to the park in LA. We would go and pick up food. We couldn't even sit in the park. Like it was just all closed off. Weird. Oh, so it was so crazy. It just felt like, am I living in the twilight zone? Like what is going on here? I'm just trying to like love my husband, love God, like, ugh. So then we realized things are somewhat open in Orange County, right? The, the regulations were a little different. And so my husband and I, just one day he goes, babe, I'm thinking about moving to Orange County. Wow. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I thought the same thing. Wow. Like we prayed and thought of it individually, which I think the Holy Spirit told us that individually. And we're like, oh. And so we talk about it. We talk to our ministers because we were very involved in our church in LA. And so we said, hey, you know, we'd love to see if we can um, just transfer, move over into Orange County. Uh, what do you think about that? We had uh, lots of talks just to make sure that all of our responsibilities in our church in LA were taken care of, people can fill in. And then we moved to OC to then serve a church here as well. And that meets in Huntington Beach. And um, so we moved to Huntington Beach and it's just, so here here we are in Orange County. And I'm just like, I live in Huntington Beach, whoa. And then now we live in Newport Beach. Um, we wanted to get as close to the ocean Sweet. as possible. Yeah, so I, I, this is a short drive from here, which is so nice. So how we, it's a huge bless blessing, mm -hmm. you know, to live where we live. We can see the ocean too. So I was like, mm, I will never move. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Plus, my kids' school, they're around. You know, we have three schools, and take us seven minutes to go to get the three of them. Oh. So it's nothing. Yeah. Basically, it's like around the corner. Yeah, so blessed. I didn't realize the qual how much my quality of life would change and how much even living within, just even living out my discipleship or my Christianity, living out, like being friends with people, people live closer in OC. I just remember being in LA and you'd have, oh, you would have to drive far 40, distances. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. It'd be like a 45 minute drive just to see a friend, mm -hmm. you know, to go out to dinner together. And I'm like, oh wow, I have so many friends within like 10 minutes of each other. And nice. <laughs> the living life. And like yes. you talked about friendship. I feel like I've been able to have, I moved here and built really deep friendships just real quick. I was like, I'm going to give my heart. And if they accept it, great. And if not, well, that's on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so, cool. Yeah. I think you might be a, a Proverbs 17. Is it Proverbs 17, 17? Where it says, I'm translating it from Spanish to English. Okay. So maybe it's not exactly. <laughs> so forgive me. But I think it says something like, if you want to be a friend, you got to show yourself a, a friend. friend. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's... There's people that are wired that way. You know, for some of us, a little more introvert, it takes a little bit longer, but we can get there. But some people are just like, you know, because I've had friends like that where they just, they just want to be friends yeah. and they show up. So maybe it was easier for you to be friends. I had a friend, friends. she would yeah. always be so upset with me. Oh, sh <laughs> everybody's your friend. Everybody's your friend. No, Millie. It's not like that. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to be friends with everybody, yeah. <laughs> you know. Because we I walk just love in, people. Uh, we we go places, <laughs> inevitably, inevitably, Millie will say hi to to me. They're random people because I don't know them, but she knows everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. So like today, I see a woman on a scooter, and I have a scooter, you know, one of those like kick scooters. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I have one of those. I'm like, look, I started that because I I've been riding my scooter since like. 2020 or before mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. so and now everybody rides in la is more common but yeah, here LA, nobody yeah. is on the scooters but almost. now now more people ride the scooters and i told millie oh look there's a woman on a scooter i impose the you know the trend and millie like oh that's my friend <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, and anywhere we go, you know, like, we, we're going to get stopped and she's going to talk to somebody that she knows. Wow. And, I love that. And plus, I have picture memory. That's how it's called. Oh, uh -huh. like, like, if I saw you for the first mm -hmm. time and I can oh, yeah. meet you five, ten years later, I know your face. I saw you before. Yeah. So, I, uh, it's in... Like, I know you from somewhere. 
Yes. Like, yes, that is yes. true. I'm like, your face looks so familiar. What's your name again? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I love it. Well, it's interesting because there's, um, and I'll have to find it somewhere, but there's a study that shows like successful people usually say hi every day to six new people. Oh, I love it. Mm-hmm. So even today, I went for a walk. I was like, I'm going to go pray. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to get my heart right, you know, be ready. And then I was like, there were so many people just walking mm-hmm. along. When I, when I was outside, I was like, oh, that was six people. Woohoo, I did my six today. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like, I'm going to be successful. So... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine me Fridays and Saturdays. That's how I feel. Because I'm in the grill cooking for people, right? Yeah, a- in the a- snack bar. And I'm just... This looking at new face. The funny thing now, I know what how they like with salsa or no salsa because their faces. You know, their I don't know their names, right? But like because I see them and their clients now, and I'm so happy. And for me to ask them, how's your day? How's your yeah. day going? You know, I like just to 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 say something good about them, and oh, at the end, enjoy your food. Hopefully, you like it. And I don't know. I just love people. It's so much fun for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I love it. So, what are you passionate about? You know, I mean, this is this oh. is cool story coming from LA. I just went to LA. We we went to LA to watch a LAFC game. Such a life giving. Life giving, so but fun. it's so different. Yes. Like LA is <laughs> yeah. so different. Like way different. It's just I I don't even know how to describe it other than. It feels a little bit more like Mexico, but a really lot of diverse. Anglo too, yeah. Yeah, oh. really diverse. Wow. Right. And like this LAFC game, you see a lot of Latinos, mm-hmm. especially in the supporter section. They're just chanting <laughs> all throughout. Like, really, they started, you know, like the, the whistle to start the game. Yeah. And they start chanting. Da, 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 and we're just like, are they going to stop at some point? No. I'm like, yes, in the middle when we have the 15 minute break. <laughs> and. And then they come back, you know, so that's the only break they take when when the teams go back inside. <laughs> but as soon as they whistle, the chanting starts, you know. And the funny thing is that, uh, you know, in the in the whole stance, there's people, there's all kinds of people, you know, like Anglo and, I don't know, different races and ethnicities mm-hmm. and whatnot. And to me, it was beautiful, you know, because here we are watching a game. But it's just so different, you know, like L.A. in that sense is, um, I don't know, I feel like it's a, it has a... And I'm saying it because, you know, I want to know a little bit about your husband's background, you know, like growing up in L.A. and all of that. Yeah. Because it seems like they're not really Mexican. It's like now they're Latino. Now they're, it's, it's almost like a new thing, you know, like, yes, our background might be either from yeah. Mexico or Guatemala. Because you can see it even Salvador, they, they have flags, Latino right? America. As they're yeah. you know, chanting. Yeah. yeah, they have you no know, just different countries where they maybe come from or their families come from. Yeah, but in a sense, like all together, it feels like okay, th- that's just Latinos from LA, you know. So as they're chanting, they're saying LA, LA. Yeah, and I'm like, wow, that truly is Los Angeles. It's almost like a melting pot now of different cultures. Yeah, and and the Anglo, they're there and they're singing yeah. in Spanish, and I'm yes. like, oh wow, they're yeah. having so much fun and singing and like they're doing workout beto because they're doing this all the time yeah. the two hours yes. <laughs> with their hands yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Fun. so anyways all that to say you know la is different and you no know, how was your you know your husband's upbringing in in la like what's his background and and how how did you connect like do you connect to that to that background you know, you know that it, i that's such a great question so I think where we unite is we did come from troubled childhoods, and I can clarify that, but it's, you know, he grew up in a little city just right by LAX. Um, So LAX is our international airport in, in Los Angeles. And it's, it's, the nickname of like the little town that he grew in now I say little town but it's like literally the city and it's like right by the ocean but nobody goes to the ocean. It's called like little Tijuana. Oh, wow. Because there's just like, like, it's just, you you hear the rancheros, you hear like the, what is it? The roosters in the morning. Like, it's almost like little Mexico, you know? I know what it is. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. We have a friend that lives really close to there. (laughs) there, Probably. (laughs) You know, like everything's in Spanish. All your neighbors are Spanish speaking. And uh, so that's how he grew up. So he didn't learn. And he was in his, he was the first in his family to be born here. Mm. So I, I personally, personally admire just 
you know, his mom traveled across the border to have him here. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't know his real dad. He grew up with his stepdad. Um, There's, you know, stories about why, but, um, and so his mom and his stepdad raised him and then all his younger siblings are um, half Cuban and his mom is Honduran. So he's 100% Honduran. Mm -hmm. And so we've actually visited his family in Honduras. And it's just like, and it's, it's very, Going and visiting Honduras, which when we visited in 2014, it was his first time actually visiting Honduras. Wow. He had never been. Yeah, because he um, was born here. He's born here. There's everything here. His mom was like, you don't need to visit, you know, and it also mm. costs a lot of money to take her kids. So she would go and visit family. Um, and so then, so he, so basically when we visited, I think it helped me to understand a lot about how he grew up because his mom would, would pretty much run her household in the way that you know with her traditions exactly and so i'm like oh i get it i understand but what i appreciate about the latino culture that maybe necessarily i didn't grow up with or experience in the same way was they could just hang out they just sit and hang out and talk and eat like we would go even when we visited in honduras uh, there was um a like i would wake up to the sound the tortilla. oh, tortillas a mano. Yeah. Oof. And I was like, they're making yes. breakfast for us, like just wow. fresh food. And then I, we come out and they're like, sit down. And was it? Siéntate. And it's just like, oh my goodness. And I was like, the hospitality. Mm. We're so, so good was, at it in Latin oh, America. Yeah. Oh. The best. And so I just like that, that I, it's so interesting because even when I fell in love with him, I, I, he's, he's, you know, American Latino. I don't know if he would even call himself that, but, you know, definitely born and raised LA. So when you say like LA, there is a difference. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I see in how he walks and talks versus maybe someone who grew up in yeah. the country, their home country. But I was like, there's there, but I still appreciate just that culture that he grew up in yeah. that I'm like, that th- those same principles i want that in my life i want that mm. in my spouse you know yeah and what is your background oh um so i grew up in long beach uh my i bro- i was born in pennsylvania so my oh, wow. like great great grandma immigrated here from romania mm. actually okay. so i'm like fourth generation like american so i'm not too connected with my European roots, but I just think that's fascinating. We actually did go to Romania last year, and it's not like I know any family there or anything, but I was like, wow, I'm from here like hundreds <laughs> of years ago. Wow. You know, was, um, and uh, and so, yeah, literally, I was born in Pennsylvania. I still have family on the East Coast, but I moved out to Long Beach because my dad was in the Navy. And so he got stationed in Long Beach. And when we moved here, um, unfortunately, because my dad was out at sea so often, my parents did get a divorce. And then I was raised mm. by my stepdad and um, and my mom. And that, that was interesting growing up with a stepdad because I always appreciate, I mean, he's my dad, right? Mm-hmm. And, but then my biological dad is my dad, mm-hmm. right? So it's so like, I have, have these, dad. I have two dads, like <laughs> I'm plentiful. I've got all these parents and I have a stepmom too. I'm like, wow, look at me. I've got all these parents. Mm. But as a kid, it didn't feel that way. It, mm. it felt like, oh, I'm embarrassed. I have two dads. So when I grew up in Long Beach, now I grew up in very different neighborhoods in Long Beach. So my dad owned his own business, my stepdad. And so sometimes we do well and we lived in maybe like the middle class and a lot of times the business wasn't doing well and we lived in hard to do areas <laughs> of Long Beach. And um, and so I, I grew up knowing what not having a lot felt like. And that was challenging as a kid, right? Like Mm -hmm. asking my parents, can I have a new pair of shoes, but having to go to pay less and get the clearance shoes because we couldn't afford like the new Skechers when Skechers was big or whatever, you know, or Nikes. I was like, oh yeah, right. I never owned Nikes like as a little kid. Um, And so I think that that's where my husband and I bonded because we we grew up with little because again, his mom and his stepdad were immigrants. And then my parents were trying to make it work um had his own business sometimes my mom would work sometimes my mom wouldn't and so but we still worked really hard for what we had mm. and i think that's that's where now as an as adults we get to live that out like 
I had to work hard to get good grades in school. My parents never went to college. I had to make it my own way through college. I had to pay my own way through college. We paid for our own wedding. Mm -hmm. Like our parents, I don't know, maybe they put in like a hundred dollars, you know, but it was really the church, our community. Talk about friends. It was our friends, Mm -hmm. our community, our church, and the little bit that we had, because literally we had little to, to make, you know, to put our wedding together. But it's like we were, and then he you know, went through school. It's just, it's just crazy how far we've come. And so I think there's also that mutual respect in our relationship Mm -hmm. of the hard work that we've had to put in Mm -hmm. because we came from little. You were a team since the beginning. Yes. You know? Yes. Sounds beautiful. Brought us together. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, there's so much value in what you're saying because I mean, one is, I think if I'm speaking to Latinos, because there's, there's a, now we're actually branding the podcast as Christian Podcast Latino because we realize, okay, we're Latinos and probably the most people that will listen to us will be Latinos, even though, like I said, you know, anybody can listen yeah. to it, right? But not everybody can listen to this. Listen to me. To an accent. <laughs> no, yeah, That's I mean, so sad. to an accent, right? I mean, yeah, it's just, just be honest, right? Okay. Some people say, yeah. right? But some people like it, right? Some people maybe that are Latinos are like, oh, yeah. I, I like her they because resonate. she's, right? They resonate, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if I'm talking to some Latinos, I think there's so much value in what you're saying because I think sometimes the perspective from Latinos hmm. is, oh, Anglos have it figured out and all together. You know? No. And it's like, okay, they, they have the better life. And and I mean, sometimes that's sad, you know, because we, we know plenty of people and you know, on the Latino side. And to me, that's, that's super, what do you say? I don't know. It's just super sad when, yeah. when, in a sense, like you victimize yourself, mm. and you don't realize that this can happen. Wow. This, it's just life, you yeah. know. <laughs> and it, yeah. It's not really about colors or races, even though there's a there, there's some of that, right? Especially in America, you know, and the how the country was founded, you know, and maybe if you go back to like in history, slavery, like that's a reality. We yeah. we're not denying that. But at the same time, you know, when when you don't value yourself, yeah, I'm, you're always going to see the other as as oh, they're up there, yeah, and you always see yourself as less than. And and I, I just want to invite people to kind of like break out of that. And in your story, I think that's why there's so much value. You know, like to say, hey, you know, like you you had to pay for your college, you had to work hard, you had to get there. Yeah, you, you it's not easy. You know, even though you're fourth generation American. Mm-hmm. Right, so I mean that's just a huge lesson for for many you're, Latinos. You're right? preaching to me, Beto. You're preaching to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I feel like yeah. I've been there. Exactly yeah. what Beto is mentioned, and but God, God helped me through this. And reading his scriptures, you know, reading the Bible is so helpful. You know how they say that the world will never come back empty. You know, uh, and uh, one day I just understood that we need to fight from victory. Yeah. We are victorious in our victims. And that hits me like, oh, that's right, God, because if you are in me, you're you're everything I need. Yeah. And you're in charge and you have a better plan than mine. So I release all to him. Mm-hmm. You know, I brought you my problems. I brought you my kids. I I'm, Here's my husband. I can change him. <laughs> but you will. <laughs> and the most Thank important you. thing, change my heart, change my mind. Yeah. And yeah, don't, we, we can do this only through Jesus. Yeah. I mean, I, I love what you're saying. It's like mm-hmm. only through Jesus. And, and I think that's why I clung to God mm-hmm. as a little girl. Not even, I mean, I, I went to a Christian church growing up, but it was challenging because I would go to church on Sunday, but because I also, within my family, my parents were alcoholics, Mm. and then there was also drug abuse in Mm. my home. And so, I was scared as a child. Like, I would go home feeling scared. And so, even as an adult, I, I, I deal with anxiety. And so, I'm, I'm processing it. I'm working on it. And I'm actually getting better in, in handling it. But I look back and I'm like, ah, it's because I'm so used to, as a little girl, not knowing what to expect. Is my, mm. is my mom going to be drunk? Is there going to be food on the table? Am I going to have to, like, find something to heat up on my own? Like, is my dad going to come home? Like, what's going to happen? There was so much chaos in the home. 
home. Um, and so it's, I think that's interesting because I look back and I'm like, wow, I remember praying as a little girl, just going, knowing that God was like my safe place. Mm. Cause I was like, where is my safe place? I mean, I'd go to school, but school only was for a few hours of the day. Mm-hmm. And then I, you know, I look back and I'm like, wow, then I became a teen. And then I, as a teen, I'd be part of all the clubs on campus. I was in choir. I was in um, whatever I could be a part of. I was there. I was doing, um, what is it, like plays, musicals in school. I was also a part of my church. So if there was any youth group event, I was going to the youth group event because I didn't want to be home. Mm -hmm. It was scary. And God really brought me some sort of peace, even as a little girl. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't quite understand it, but at least he gave me that outlet. And so then as an adult, I'm like, oh my gosh, now he has to even be my peace even more. Like it's just, but I I, I look back, I'm like, that was God. Like without God, I don't know where I would be. Mm -hmm. Like he literally brought people in my life. He brought Mm -hmm. mentors. He would bring a teacher or a counselor or friends. I'm just like, there, I, I don't know how, there's just no way I would be where I'm at because people look at me, like you said, oh, like the Anglos, they look at you as if you have everything. Yeah, I've been, I've been told that. That wow. has been a stereotype. Mm-hmm. I literally, I come up, someone come up to me and said, well, that's not fair. You've been, you know, fed with a silver spoon, which means like you've had everything given to you. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish, I wish, I wish that was wow. my life growing up, but it was very difficult. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe different difficulties um but i still had to work for what i got Mm -hmm. you know and so and maybe there i had a little bit more advantages than others it just depends Mm -hmm. on on how you see the world but even then i struggle with the victim mentality i struggle and that's what i've been working on personally you know Mm -hmm. it's like i am not a victim where do you struggle with victim mentality it's kind of like the poor me attitude, um, you know, kind of like even talking about mental health, like mm-hmm. depression is kind of like, oh. Talking about triggers. Triggers. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's like. <sighs> yeah, I could talk I about just, that. I just learned that new word because like, but just, I think you had just, just had a trigger. Like, what are you talking about? I'm healthy. God transform me. I'm a new person. And I'm crying. Ah, all devastated for a situation like, Oh my gosh, so I, I try to reach out more information about triggers, like so much to heal. Yeah. So much to heal from my past that I thought I was resolved. But and and I'm so thankful for the triggers because now I can react to them the different way. Yes. You know, this is triggering me. Why? Why now? Why do God wants to you want you he wants to still heal me in my heart yeah. and so that way we can be mature for what he wants us to do. Mm. Right? Yeah. And yeah. so I, I know we're his base, best, be, I, that word. Vessels. Vessels. <laughs> Vessels. <laughs> Vessels, yes. Yeah. Es como yeah. beso. Vessels. Oh, not beso. Not we're beso. learning Vessels. Spanish Vessels. and this is in two. <laughs> I mean, I think what you're saying is so valid because I think the word trigger is just used in society. It's like, well, you're triggering me and that's a trigger. But what we do is then we pull back. Oh, well, that, oh, well, that's giving me anxiety. You're giving me anxiety. The way you're saying that is giving me anxiety. The way you're looking at me is giving me anxiety. Oh my gosh. Like you're, that's our world right now. Oh my gosh. And it's, and trust me, I've said that to myself, but then I'm like, whoa, that is a total lie from Satan. Mm. The victim mentality goes, you are causing me to feel this feeling. You're giving me anxiety. No, nobody's giving mm. you anxiety. Anxiety comes from you. It's yes. starts within you. Yes, your, you believe that. Yes, your brain is triggering a physiological response in your body. But is it, so there, your brain is looking at that person. Oh, maybe they said something and it's triggering you your brain thinks somehow that's dangerous. But to someone sitting next to you, they'd be like, that's not weird. I'm totally not triggered. So is it really that person then? Or is it you? It's 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 me. I, I'm the one that sees it in an unsafe way. So I have to deal with it. And so it's like, okay, dealing with those triggers. It's like, okay. So now I go, so now if something happens, somebody like, okay, something minimal, somebody cuts me off in traffic, right? Okay, wow, that makes me mad. Like, why why they got to cut me off? Wait a minute. This is good feedback. Okay, feedback. I'm going to receive this as feedback. So this is the way I'm rephrasing it, right? 
okay, this makes me upset. Why is somebody cutting me off make me upset? And then I ask myself those questions. I'm like, oh, because I feel like they're taking space from me. Why would I think they're taking something from me? This road doesn't belong to me. Mm. Like, mm. Who, we're all driving together, mm -hmm. right? And so then I'm like, well, then what deep down did I learn in my childhood that mm -hmm. would make me feel like they're taking something from me? And then I start, oh, then, then I get into a deep hole and I'm in meditations and I'm praying and I'm like, God, show me, you know, but it's, but that's where you take the power back and you, mm. you're you not a victim is you just take everything as feedback, ask yourself those questions, ask God to show you. And it is so freeing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's powerful. There's a, so yeah, I mean, when, how you respond to events, I mean, that's, that's funny that, because <laughs> I always tell Millie that example, you know, of driving, and she's like, wow, that's funny, because it doesn't really happen to me that much, right? I, I care less. Yeah, she cares less. Never But it's a very typical, me. it's a very typical, because um, I'm uh, what do you say, um, example yeah. right when you're driving and anyways all that to say which i forgot which let me bring it back <laughs> and reel the, the in, time reel my my um my sister-in-law told me immediately i think it's because you're the person who comes in oh, you know yeah. you oops yeah. maybe i'm the one who causing problems yeah. to other people yeah <laughs> millie's the one cutting people off <laughs> sorry 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 <laughs> That's like putting your hand out the window sorry oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but what was I going to say? I'm helping them. React. <laughs> the, oh, yeah. Because uh, there's a little bit of... Uh, so, you know, as I was saying at the beginning that America needs more friendships and all of yeah. that. You know, I've been here 20 years in America. And, uh, you know, just trying to understand where I'm at and yeah. why this country is the way it is. And, you know, we just went through a <laughs> an election hmm. time. and wild. Right? It was wild. So, anyways, I'm just trying to figure out what is America. Why am I? Why am I here? And how can I contribute to it? Yeah. From from my background, my background, right? The background that God brought me here with, which is, I mean, to this day, and we always say it on the podcast. You know, we are undocumented to this day here in America, mm. 20 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. So anyways, that gives you just a way different perspective because at this point, I'm like, okay, I haven't been in Mexico, right? Because I can't travel. I haven't been in Mexico in 20 years. Wow. But I'm not a citizen of the US. Mm. But am I really a Mexican if I'm not in Mexico? That's interesting. Right? So I feel like I'm, I'm neither at this yeah. point, you know? But I'm probably more American than I think because I've been yep. here for so long, you know? So even as an undocumented... I'm I'm an American citizen, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Uh, so that I mean that sounds kind of weird, but all that to say, you know, I feel like I look at America and then I start thinking, okay, like that example, you know, why do people bring it so much? Why is it a thing? And you know, the fact that I said also, like, I feel people need more friendships and like go from the shallow to the deep, yeah, right, relationships. So I was thinking, okay, yeah, America has a a lot of like my way or the highway and that, mm. i think that's that's what it means right when you're driving and yeah. you get in they're not getting in your way you're just thinking it's your way but it's everybody's way that's why you have mm. so many lanes right mm -hmm. reach <laughs> so but that's the interesting thing of america like wow like everybody's just pursuing their own thing like the other mm. day and i felt like god yes. brought me this picture i was driving we were driving i don't know somewhere and I, we saw a park Right, and in this park, I was I was trying to get uh, to Dorian's our middle uh, son. He had a soccer game, so as we're getting there, you know, we're driving through Irvine, which is a you know, really nice city here in Orange County, uh, with big streets and big parks and yeah. stuff. Green so, everywhere. Green everywhere, and Beautiful. as I'm driving through one of them, I see like a dad. I don't know if it was a dad, but for sure like a coach coaching a kid baseball, but like one on one. And I saw that and I'm like, that, it just, that picture just stuck with me because it's like, wow, America is so interesting. It's like everybody wants to be someone, mm -hmm. right? And what is that someone in America? Well, you're either, you know, an artist, a musician, yeah. 
uh, an athlete mm. and always you want to be the best right like we're never mm. what do you say we're never comfortable i don't know if the word's comfortable but in spanish nunca estamos a gusto con nuestra posición so we always want like the best position right we want to be we want to win the gold medals mm. we don't want to win bronze if we win it i mean it's okay but we're really aiming for for gold and that's not bad but what i notice is that yeah. it, it almost seems like everybody's on that trajectory of like if i don't start right now with this kid as he's five on this field coaching him every day one-on-one -on -one, so that one day he can be the best like i wonder how many parents or coaches do that and how many will get to be Yeah. The, no, the and, baseball and, player. And that's how they yeah. think. Remember, I went to this coach and I asked him for a scholarship to my son. Oh, yeah. And he went and saw him and he came to me like, and he told me literally, your son is not good. So I have no <laughs> reason. to make it. I <laughs> have no reason to give you a scholarship because he's bad and he's never going to make it because he's so old. Hey, yo, he's old? 12 years old? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I have kids who started since they were five. So he's never going to make it. So don't waste your time. So maybe, you know, you can bring him to me and we can do something. And I'm just thinking, no, thank you. You think I'm, I want my son to come to you to put him more down? Like, I think sometimes we need that, right? You're not going to be good at it. And like, oh, just see me, right? Mm -hmm. But also, I, I think the way he put my son down and me, I was like, this is not coming from God. Mm. You know, because God, with God, we have so much hope, right? Because oh, yeah. who cares who you are? In me, you can do everything, everything through me, yeah. you know? And uh, what you were saying, Beto, I love that because we turn our own gods, mm. right? When we just fight for to have something or to be someone, we fight so hard just for us. Yeah. But the difference is when you do everything for God to glorify Him, that's the difference. Because you know you're going to do the best. Why? Because it's Him through you. Yeah. And He's the best. He's perfect. Yeah. You know, He's so all-powerful, but it's for His glory. Yeah. Yeah. And, and those seem to be the stories that in, inspire, right? Like, I'm, like again, right? I'm just kind of like, I feel like a little bit of an outsider in America. And for example, some movies we watch that are inspiring of like a coach teaching the underdog team, you know, how oh, we're going to be, we're going to win or whatever, right? And they end up winning the season or the, the medal or the, the whatever it was, right? Because there's a lot of those movies. But what's interesting is that it's usually like the local team. Yeah. Right? And why does why is that inspiring? Well, because somebody went out of their way to build an entire community around this idea of like, hey, let's let's come together. So there's there's that element of like I'm not doing it for myself, you know, for just to be the god of this sport or the god, you know, like just get my own glory. And I think that's why those stories inspire in America. It just it just feels like Yeah. Uh, a brewing ground for either or you know like america yes. is it's like why do people come from so many other countries from honduras yep. from mexico from romania to america right it's because like like for me all my life i've heard america is the greatest country in the world wow. right and then you look at like in my case it was music the american like I, dream i wanted yeah. to come here because music right like all the music that i heard was from from the united states yep. and then one day you know when i came and i started you know playing and blah 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 you know never never really got there we never really made it but then on another sense i feel like wow there, there there's like for example in mexico there's so much talent mm. but maybe they never had the 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 people that i don't know i don't know if it's the mentorship people, but the, the mentorship yeah. the money yeah. the the community to go around and say This is how we take you to the next level. Yes. You you become successful, right? Yes. Yeah. Because America has a lot of that for everything, you know, yes. for sports, for yeah. music, for everything. For we're, church. Mm -hmm. For churches. We're the best at everything. Yeah. Right. And that's why people want to come to America to be the best. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like who's giving an opportunity and who's to say that God's not going to use 
the people in their own home countries if they don't have the resources, quote unquote. Yeah. Right. And so, for example, the other day I was watching a woman give a speech for a um, uh, missions gathering. Mm -hmm. And, and I, she was from Brazil, but I, I don't remember if the conference was in Brazil or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But she was speaking to Latin America and she was saying, look at us, look at Latin America. We became from from being the mission field we became missionaries mm. and now we're sending people to yeah. the rest of the world, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why I, I tell Millie when I'm here in America and especially with the background we have, I'm like, we're missionaries in this country mm -hmm. and God has allowed for us to yeah. not have a citizenship so that we can be relatable to so many people that are here in with the same situation with you. as us. Yeah. We are in the same, right? Yeah. It's beautiful. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting because, you know, I love that there is so much opportunity here in this yeah. country, right? Um, and so it's like you could either look at it as like, oh, wow, there, you know, it's just all for one type of person. That's kind of like the victim mentality. Or like you were saying is there's you can build a community around you, build mentorships around you that actually like help you achieve your dream. And the fact that you can actually achieve that or if say, OK, if your son okay, it, it is probably not going to build the skills that he needs. He can still, there's still other opportunities. Like he can still build a successful life and still do beyond leagues in that particular sport. And I just love that there, it's just like endless and it's open. And I feel like that's where God is so abundant. Like he doesn't, he doesn't put us in a box. Society wants to put us in a box. Culture wants to put us in a box. Our upbringings want to put us in a box. Our families want to put us in a box. What is it? Um, uh, uh, there's anyways, there's a, my husband talks about crabs in a bucket. I don't know if you've ever heard of crabs in a bucket. Yes. Yeah. It's like, Los cangrejos en el... and, uh -huh. yeah, yes. like that phrase of like, you know, the crab wants to get out of the bucket, but then each of the crab is going to, they try to climb on each other. And so they bring each other down. And so unfortunately that's, it's sometimes what family is. Mm. And so he has shared that you know, personally with his family. And I'm like, I kind of feel that with my family too. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like when you try to break out of that cycle and try to do something different than what you, what your family is doing or what you grew up in, then others look at you as like, well, mm -hmm, yeah, I see what you're doing. Oh, now you think you've got it all. My husband's been told that. I have been told that. And it's just like, I just want to achieve yeah, my because, dreams. Leave me yes. alone. <laughs> they, wow. they're, they driving by their fears. Mm. You know, and they pass it to you. Yeah. Yeah. It is it is hard. It's rough. To get out. So what is success from from your vantage point? Successful in America even. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's it's having I think, I think the community, first mm -hmm. of all, having those friendships. That is that is so rare to have those deep, intimate friendships and relationships to to have three people. Like I, I was reading a statistic. It, if you can have three people that you can call at any time and you are going through a hard time and they will listen to you and not judge you, that is already going to increase your life. You will actually Ay, live a Dios. longer <laughs> on this planet. Yeah. So nice. But that's not found in a mm. lot of spheres, mm. right? And so having that community, having that friendship. And of course, we want to blame it on oh well it's just culture it's just society no you got to find them we got to go after them you got to give your heart you got to be willing to be hurt right in order to be like oh oh well, this person didn't work out on to the next you know um so it's definitely having that i think it's in having that i think of a lot of success is having that inner peace mm. right inner peace that honestly only comes from god i have i've tried my hardest to find inner peace in self-help books I have mm. tried to find inner peace from my therapy, right? Getting therapy. I've tried to find it from growing in the corporate ladder and get being manager and, uh, you know, making more money. It, I just, I don't feel it from any of that. And so it is, has been deepening my relationship with God um, and finding confidence and security mm. in Him. Him, mm. that has given me a lot of that inner peace that I'm still working on. Yeah. Um, but I think also then too is um, being able to 
and not be afraid to have dreams. Now, dreams are different mm. for everyone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Having those dreams and then not being afraid to go after it and then mm -hmm. pulling in the resources and then putting them before God and allowing God, like you said, to to allow them to happen. So I just yeah. say those, those three things. Yes, mm. I love that. Yeah, uh, Paul, one of the... I mean, he's basically the author of half of the New Testament <laughs> in the Bible. But he's so epic because in the book of Acts, you can see his trajectory, right? And everything he lived and, and all the struggles he went through uh, physically, emotionally, and all kinds. And I mean, and even God, when he kind of like when Paul has a conversion from persecuting Christians. To being to a become, killer. Yeah, to, <laughs> yeah, from being the killer to being a proponent of, of Jesus. Uh, God says to him, I will show him how much he should suffer for my message, basically. Mm, wow. Right? And then he goes through this ordeal of things. But what I love about Paul is that he's so confident in the calling he has. Mm. You know, and it, like I feel like that's his, his ambition, you know, and, and one of the scriptures in the Bible, it actually uses that word or that translation, you know, like Paul's ambition is to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. So the people that are not Jewish and that's his ambition. That's like, yeah. I'm going to do this. And guess even what? Though this is going to be the last thing yes, I do. Yes. I'm going to pursue this a hundred percent. And then wow. in the book of Acts, you can actually read how it says that and maybe, you know, tapping into the bivocational um, maybe we can talk about that because it says that he sustained himself. Yeah. And when people are like, "Hey, we we want to give you money," it's like, "Yes, give me money," but you know, like I uh, plenty. Like I just I have plenty. You know, like I have work. I yeah. work for what I have, and I'm okay financially, basically. <laughs> right. So he was super confident in like I'm aiming for this goal. I have this dream. This is my ambition. This is what I'm pursuing, and it's for the sake of the gospel. Right. It's not just yeah. like. You know, oh, just to make money, but to really share the gospel and preach it. And here we are, you know, 2000 years later, having half of our Bible come from him because he, he had that passion. He yeah. was victorious. Yes. Wow. How in the world he was in jail and wrote that beautiful letters. Yes. And he yep. was not asking, please pray for me so I can get out. Yeah. Ever. Mm. Wow. I didn't realize that. Right? He yeah. was like, no, no, teaching people. He was giving hope mm -hmm. to people. And, and no, no, no. I was like, I'm so amazed. Because if we see his life, you know, in compared with our lives, that we're not suffering. Honestly, we're in a beautiful bubble here. You know, in Costa Mesa, we have everything. If I'm poor here, I'm rich in everywhere else around the world. You know, my <laughs> yeah. kids go to the best schools, like even the public ones, they look like private because they can pay nine extra teachers to help them. You know, it's like the, the, the material they have. It, it is amazing, amazing because... Uh, a lot of parents, they put a lot of money on their education, you know, so the, the schools look like private and the view, the weather, like the food, you know, we have so many organic products yeah. everywhere. And I mean, th this is heaven. And and we sometimes we victim victimize ourselves like, oh, why? Because it's so much wealthy people here. Mm. Then you feel like you're super poor compared to them yeah you know but it's this is extreme you know <laughs> what they have and they own like uh, it's insane but yeah. that's why um refocus self in jesus who we are and what we have and we can have that gratitude in our hearts that in him we have everything everything you know, yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm so impressed by Paul. Yeah. I mean, you look at Apostle John. I mean, he wrote John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Revelation, and he wrote 
uh, on, he was in exile. He's pretty much in jail in the island of Patmos all by himself. They just, here, we'll go put you. And those are on the times when the islands were like where you didn't want to go because nobody lived there. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Now island is like, I want to go vacation on an island. No, he was not vacationing. But I'm just like, but he still is like, no, I need to write this message. I need mm-hmm. to write to the disciples and make sure that they have comfort because they are going through crazy persecution right mm-hmm. now. They are being mm-hmm. killed for their faith. But I'm still going to send that that message out mm-hmm. to them. And I was like, wow. So if, if they could do th- those huge impactful things, Paul, John, all the with the little that they had, and yet I literally live in rich abundance, mm-hmm. what impact can I have? Mm-hmm. What can we do? Mm-hmm. And so that's where I'm like, okay, like you say that calling. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. What can I do? What's my calling? Let's go, God. Woo! You know? So love it. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh let's end on that. What are you currently doing? with pablo right paul (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) with pablo Uh, because you guys were saying you know you like to help people in their like bivocational ministry or what is that you know what are you currently working on as maybe as a couple in in the type of work you do yeah so uh, you know i'll start kind of our story how we became bivocational ministers Mm. um because when we met you know we were dating and we were serving as interns in the college ministry we call it the campus ministry and we loved it we loved i think that also bonded us was serving in the ministry together i mean we were just like planning fun college ministry events, right? Um, We're studying the Bible with people. We're meeting people on campus and going, do you want to get to know God? And those things just brought us together. And so then now we're going, okay, wow, let's think about we're going to get married. And he's like, I want to be in the ministry full time. And I'm like, really? I don't. (laughs) You know, because I just looked at ministers like, wow, they really don't get paid. Like, I don't want to be broke the rest of my life, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Although it's funny because now that I've grown, I'm like, wow, but God has a special place for full-time ministers because Mm. they are taken care of. Like, I just hear the craziest stories of like, we didn't even realize in this show. So many miracles. Yes. Miracle after miracle after miracle. I'm like, oh my goodness. (laughs) So anyways, God proved me wrong on that years like years later, right? But um, and so as we're discussing, like, okay, well, we're gonna get married. And he has this dream of being in the full-time ministry, being paid. That's all he does is preach, meet with people, counsel, build up churches, all of that. And for me, I'm like, I don't, I wanna be in the corporate world, right? And so because I had this vision of me growing up poor, I mean, you know, broke in a sense of all the financial instability from my childhood, I carried that fear of I don't want to continue that brokenness in a sense in my adulthood. So I'm going to try to make it big, quote unquote, in the corporate world. And so he was like, okay, well, and of course we had mentors in our life and our church that helped us with this. And so we compromised and it was, well, why don't we still serve at a high capacity in the church, but we will just self-support ourselves. We'll Mm -hmm. still have our full-time secular jobs, but we're still going to serve as if we're like, in the full-time ministry. And so that's what we did. Um, and yeah, we got married. I think I was 22. He was 23, 24. Oh yeah, I was 20, 23, 25. There you go, 23 and 25. And so we served in the youth and family ministry, we, um, which is like uh, junior high and teenagers. And then we served, um, we still kind of served in the campus ministry. We also built up young marrieds groups. Uh, then we started serving, then we our, our responsibility just kept increasing. And they're like, hey, can you start a whole new ministry at like 5 p.m.? Just start a whole brand new 5 p.m. service. So our, our responsibility just kept growing. And they're like, can you start this new group? Can you start this new thing? Can you do that? And it's like, oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, sure. And basically, we were actually serving at the same capacity as other full-time ministers, wow. but we had our full-time jobs. Wow. And so I was like, oh my goodness. So I think at some point we're like, uh, hi, can can we like get like a stipend? <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> we were just shelling out money for the church because again, God was blessing us financially. So we wanted to give back because we're like, we love this church. We love God. We love His people. This is what brings us fulfillment, enjoyment. And so... Um, and so then it, it, I think it just kind of grew in a sense of we would learn through our mistakes of, okay, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling stressed. Like I'm feeling anxiety. So then I'd work through, okay, what can I do with my schedule? How can I process this with God? I'm going to grab, get therapy. I'm going to pull in a more mature woman in this situation. I'm going to pull in a team. I'm going to work with people. I'm going to raise people. Up. So we basically just built our life around how do we self support ourselves? 
How do we build as we're growing in our careers? Because mind you, he's growing in his career. He's getting promotions. He's getting licensed as a marital family therapist. I'm getting promotions. I'm getting more money, but we're alongside we're growing more and more responsibility in the church. So it wasn't one or the other. It wasn't like, oh, if you do more for the church, you can't really do more for your career. No, God is like, you can actually have both. Mm. And so we were like, oh. And so then people started asking us, how are you doing that? How are you? How? I want to know too. I, know. <laughs> I, I, I feel like this is, I feel like we've found this secret in a sense, like, because American society says you can't have, like, you can have it all, but you can't have it all. Like, you can't be serving in the church and you can't, like, that's just too much. You have to do less. If you're stressed, do less. But God doesn't well, say do that. nothing. Do nothing. Oh, like, doesn't? That I mean, sounds depressing. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So um, that's been our life. And so we're like, how do we share this with the world? Tell us the secret. <laughs> what is the secret I sauce? Wait. <laughs> I want to do more. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, it's interesting because the pandemic happens and we literally are getting a few phone calls from people. We got a phone call from this family in Texas. They're like, our church is so small. We can't afford a minister. I don't. They couldn't even afford someone part time mm. to lead their church. They're like, we are willing to do it, but we need training. We are, and we're like, oh, wow. Okay, I guess we could train you. Can you move to Orange County? They're like, yeah, we're <gasps> willing to move to oh, Orange wow. County to get training so we can go back to our church. We're like, whoa. And then we got a full uh, phone calls from people around the world. We're like, whoa, we need to almost reproduce what we do and share it with people. Mm. So that's what we've been doing the last few years. It's been taking a very long time because we're like, you know, working full time or serving in the church as if we're full time. We have full time ministry hearts is what mm. we call it. Full time ministry hearts. Wow. But just, you know, have, you know, secular jobs. So yeah. So we've built a ministry and we called it Stilos Ministry. So, S-T-Y-L-O-S. So, we're really building out a Stilos ministry to help train people, to give people resources, encouragement, community. Where around. it can sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, what is that? What is a Stilos? Yeah. So, Stilos in, the word, in, in Greek means pillar. Mm. And if you look in, I think it's Revelation 3.12, Revelation 3.12, I want to say it's, um, it says, to those who are victorious, I will make them pillars in the temple of our God. Mm. Uh, maybe I'm See, rephrasing I that. told you to that I was receiving, I, I was ready to receive. That's for wow. me. I okay. love it. A ver, ahí te va. So I'm going to receive wow. this, okay? I'm going to cry. <laughs> Revelation 3.12 yeah. says, the one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. Mm. The verse continues, I will write on them the name of my God and in the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. <laughs> wow. Mm. That's incredible. Because yeah. the, the temple of God, I mean, I want to hear more, right? But <laughs> this is kind of like a, a little snippet right here. Yeah. Uh, I just been reading about how the, the Hebrews from... Since since ever they started following God, you know Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you know the the patriarchs, they always wanted to, you know, build an altar for God, and then they yeah. build a tabernacle for God, right? So you see a progression. It goes from a place of reverence to God to a tabernacle where He yeah. inhabits, then to a temple, right? So a bigger, like more established place. But then Jesus, that's one of the reasons they crucified Jesus because, and, 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 you know, they come against him and they bring people saying, he said that he will destroy the temple and in three days he would rebuild it. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, blasphemy, blasphemy, you know, we're going to yeah. throw him away. But they didn't understand. But they didn't yeah. understand. And then, uh, uh, who is it? I think it's in, in um, the book of Acts or I can, yeah, I think it's in the book of Acts. It's Stephen, when they're stoning Stephen to yeah. death. Right, he says basically he, he kind of like does a recap of the patriarchs. He goes through history lane and he starts saying, you know, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all our forefathers. And then he says uh, basically this idea that God doesn't dwell in temples made of stone. 
He dwells in our hearts. Mm. He dwells in us. Yeah. You know, so this this uh, picture of revelation is making an emphasis that, yeah, the temple was great, but that wasn't the goal mm. all along. The goal was that I could dwell in you. Yeah. And not only that, he's saying, I will make you pillars of the temple of God. Like you as a person, as a human being, you're part of the construction of the temple of God, yeah. which is not a building. It's it's a in a sense I don't know a spiritual building he's making and you're part of that if I mean if you want to right so yeah anyways, that, if you that, believe that, that yes that's yeah. that's so cool yeah. okay so that's a pillar yeah so I mean I appreciate that imagery because it's so true because now the church is us right we are the uh -huh. church the people yes and so he's saying to those who are victorious because he's talking a lot about persecution in Revelation mm. it's like it's i mean the type of persecution that they got it was like if they said jesus is lord they would immediately be taken and fed to the lions i mean it was just nasty what they experienced and so he's like to those who are victorious so he's saying if you just keep keep hanging on to jesus keep hanging on to your faith i will make you a pillar and so what what our vision our passion our calling in uh, my husband and i is really which I have really taken this personally is we want to raise up as many pillars in the church, which is individuals that can raise people up and other individuals that can help deal with crises that can help. Okay. The, the new moms that can maybe start a, a, a single parents program, uh, anyone that can really make a difference and be influential in their church and make it better. Those are the people we want to raise up. That's what the church needs. And the full-time minister can't do it all. Mm. I mean, full-time ministers are quitting in crazy rates right now. Their mm -hmm. burnout mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. through the roof because God never designed them, going back to what we were originally stating, for them to do it on their own. Do everything. They can't do everything themselves. on their own. The church is meant to do that with them. We're supposed to be disciples just like they're a disciple of Jesus. We're a disciple of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But again, because of our culture, we go, well, the, the minister should just do everything. That's why they get no. paid. Yes, right? that's your job. Yeah. It's like, oh, goodness, wow. check your heart. If you, if you, <laughs> ooh, like. But, I, but how do you find the people that are like you who are within the church and they're like, I would do this even if they don't pay me. Yeah. And it's almost like I can pay my own salary, but I love the church and I want to invest in the church with my time and talent and you know, yeah. all of those. And like, are those hard to find people? Are most people like, where did you? Because I don't know. It seems like people are like, oh, well, that's that's their job. That's what the pastor does. Or yeah. that's what that's why we hire them to do the yeah. the ministry stuff. Right, but is I don't know. Is that is that right? <laughs> I know, and and maybe that's our laziness. Mm. We go, ah, we'll pay them. Also, I'm I don't I'm donating money yeah. for him to do his job. So he should do his job. I'm like, <gasps> like mm. yes, they are doing it. Maybe more than you are, but we're still called to the same standard of living in the Bible. All of us, right? Now, I think when full-time ministers get to heaven, they're going to have any leader in the church is going to be like, ooh, you know, there's going to be a little bit more pressure on them as far as, anyways, more accountability. Mm. But honestly, it's having intimate conversations with people. That's how we've been able to find other people that are like, I want to be like you. We have been told, I can't even count, I want to be like you. I want to be able to, like young marrieds that we'll have dinner with. And again, we're sharing a meal. We're having those deep conversations because you can't find these people by doing an announcement or a Facebook ad or, you know, posting on social media. I feel like you can to a degree, but it's having those intimate conversations and going, what are your dreams? What are your goals? What do you want for your life? And then you find out, Oh, they do want to make an impact. Mm -hmm. And then you almost give, maybe they don't see that they can ha do it in the church because mm -hmm. sometimes we're blinded by ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. We go, oh, well, I want to have this great career. I want to be a graphic designer and I'm trying to build my business. You, you know what? Somebody, if somebody says that over the table, my husband and I will go, oh, that is amazing. How can we support you in your career wanting to be a graphic designer? Maybe we, we actually need your services in the church. Why don't you help? You know what? We can actually use you for this event. We need love if you can create flyers. 
we don't have much to pay or maybe we can like give you like a hundred bucks, like a little gift. Or you know what? Why don't we just treat you out to dinner? That's all that we can do. Mm. And so we kind of allow them to find out their dream. You can actually do it in the church too. Mm -hmm. God is not limited to you doing it outside. You can live your dream here in the church and serve the church. And it's fun. Look at us. Yeah. But, I mean, but we're, we're living our dream, don't yes. you? Yes, but I think, I mean, yes, we are. I love it. But I think that's a great invitation because if something maybe, you know, kind of like tying it back to the whole conversation we've been having today is coming from Mexico and coming from a Christian church in Mexico, mm -hmm. that was super natural in, over there. Mm -hmm. You know, like growing up and, you know, I'm, I'm going to school, but I can use my talents in the church. That was so natural. Without you know, getting paid. Without getting paid. Like, it's what I tell the, the musicians all the time. You know, we were, I don't know if now has changed, right? Because, you know, things evolve and for sure, you know, the churches are different now, I'm sure. But um, nobody was getting paid for to be a worship leader, right? <laughs> nobody was getting paid, you know, to be the, the kids ministry uh, lead or whatever. You just did it because, mm -hmm. oh, your, this is, your this, heart, I'm your serving passion. Christ, I'm serving yeah. God. Yeah. This is awesome. And not to say, you know, that they don't deserve to be paid, but it was, it was just like the natural thing to do, mm. you know? Oh. And so, so anyways, all that, like, I feel like where, why don't we find people like that here? Like what, what's missing? Or maybe they want it. It's like the one thing they yeah. want, but they don't know that they want. Yeah. Right? Mm. This, is, this is really what you need, but you haven't discovered it. And, and uh, let me know if I'm wrong, but I think fate is a lot of what we fear for. But, but probably we don't have enough faith to do what we love to do because we're afraid of not have enough for tomorrow. Yeah. You know, to like, okay, if I'm going to invest my time on this, how am I going to survive? Yeah. Right? I don't know. I, I, I feel like... Um, yeah, like if I deplete myself in, if I keep giving and giving and giving, then I'm going to be left with nothing. Mm -hmm. And so if I give too much to the church, then... Am how am I going to survive? Yeah. It's like... Mm -hmm. Is you need to have faith that God is in charge. Yeah. That he will supply. You know, and you were saying that before, that um, when you live by faith, it's like you, you don't know what, how you're going to uh, pay rent tomorrow, but today you have enough. Yeah. And God is a God of miracles. Ooh. And we watch and, you know, look where we were before and look where we are right now and all the miracles we experience like of course god is going to do it again you know because he did it in the past he's going to do it again yeah and it's going to be the best christmas ever <laughs> you know because we think oh how are we going to make it for christmas and our gift and i'm telling you all this because that's how we live by faith mm -hmm. you know to be illegal here and do what we love to do without knowing that we've, we're we going to have enough. Yeah. But so far, we'll, we every day we ate, we eat, yeah. and we glorify God for everything He does. He opened doors when we think, you know, w that will not be possible for yeah. ourselves to do it, right? But God opened doors and it's like, oh, wow, that was God. Wow. Because by ourselves, uh, it will never happen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think faith is huge. Absolutely. Because it's, it's, and, and I was absolutely, I've been challenged in my faith in living this bivocational life. It's like, okay, I feel like I'm giving so much. You know, it's like I'm going to work and then we have what's called midweek. So we'll have like a, a midweek service like on a Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm exhausted like everyone else who's mm. driving to our midweek service. But then I've got to plan it and coordinate it and maybe do the lesson or I'm doing or I'm leading songs. And so I think what was interesting because I'm like, then I drive home and I'm like falling asleep at the wheel because I just feel spent. So it's then so but if you if you feel spent, you feel overwhelmed, you feel stressed, you keep going through that and you bring God into it. And that's where I was like, okay, I'm feeling exhausted. I need help. So that's when you raise the red flag. That's where faith comes in. Nicole, I can't do everything. Mm. 
Nicole and Pablo, my husband, we can't do everything. So we go, we need shepherds. We need people who are wiser than we are. We need people who are experienced in helping marriages. We need people who are experienced in planning events. We need people who are, and so that's when we we look. A team. At, we need a team. <laughs> yes. We could not do it without a team. There's no way. Mm. And so that has really alleviated a lot of the stress that we have felt because then now we've built a team and guess what? Now we've built a community. Mm. So now there's fulfillment. So now I'm serving in the church with my friends, people I love that I value, I respect. And I'm like, they this are living. Awesome. Oh. And it, then I feel like this is discipleship to its fullest. Mm. Now I'm fulfilled and I'm happy. Oh, it's like the best feeling ever, ever. That's how I felt right now in my life mm. to being a mother. I was just texting my friend. Thank you for so much for coming yesterday to my house. I am so thankful for your life because yeah. I can do this by myself. Mm. To, just to raise my kids. <laughs> I need people around me, you know. Where support me that you know what I feel you I'm a mom too and I cook and I do this and I do that and I have such a hard time with my kids because I'm teaching this and it, oh, I feel the same way and just to listen to each other yeah you know that that's normal to having teenagers and you know they have their times and it's challenging and plus we're sending them uh, to a life group or to a youth group that's so helpful too because you know it's some parts that I, I'm in this time of my life that for me it's so hard to sit down and do games with my kids mm -hmm. plus my my kids they need other friends their age you know to do that to 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 play games and have fun you know yeah so and I need a team. <laughs> we need we need each other. We need That's each other. Fact. And yes. when we can admit that and be mm. humble, but then say that to someone, I need you. That is so vulnerable. And now you're building that trust. I was learning recently that trust isn't built by asserting authority. Like trust isn't like, well, here's my resume and here's all the great things I've done. Trust is when there's actually that mutuality, mm. that back and forth mm. saying, you know, uh, yes, I here's all that I have, but you know what? I need you too. What you offer is helping me and help. You know, there's like that 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 mutuality, and I was like, oh, that's interesting because trust. I feel like has been taught in our society, like, oh, well, I can trust this person because they're a doctor or because they have this degree, mm. right? It's but then God, as we know, uses the lowly. Mm. Yes. He uses the poor. He uses those who don't have a lot to make a huge impact. And that's Ooh. how I feel like I am. I came from little. My husband came from little. And we're just like, we're just trying to make it with God. We're like, let's go. Mm. And I'm like, that's. And so then because I don't, I wasn't given everything in life, I had to work really hard. I mean, God gave it to me. Um, then I, I can admit my need. And then people are like, oh, well, yeah, I have that strength because I know I have a lot of weaknesses. And so I'm able to admit, okay, I need someone like this, like this, like this. And they're like, oh, I can do that. And so I think when we can come as a leader with humility, mm. people, people respond so good to that. Mm -hmm. But I think as leaders, we're like, I got it all together. So That's we need to pray for that, for that hearts, you know, that they think they can do it all. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's Oof. <laughs> oh, so so good. Okay, can't can't wait to you know have Pablo here on the podcast too. And if he speaks Spanish, that would be awesome because like we were saying, you know, we can do like this whole thing, but in Spanish and just you know put it on the Spanish stream. Yeah. Uh, but that there's so many valuable lessons in what we've been talking about. And gonna kick off the music while you say where do you want to point people to you know, if they wanna if they're maybe local here and they want to find out more about the work you're doing and how they can you know get in touch with you just tell them you know stylos or or oh, yeah. i don't know where they can go but yeah please absolutely 
you can follow us on Instagram at Stylos Leadership, S-T-Y-L-O-S Leadership. Send me a message, put the word leader in the message, and then I'll, we, I'll send you our free guide for the 10 must-have essentials for being successful and balanced in your career and ministry life. We want to support you and help you. You can also check out our website, Stylos, S-T-Y-L-O-S dot world, W-O-R-L-D. We want to connect with you. We'd love to have you. Let us know how we can help you. Love it. That's so good. Thank you so much for being the light and the salt of this world. I can wait for follow your steps. (laughs) (laughs) I love what you guys are doing. Thanks for being a light and allowing us to just share our stories with the world. Oh, you guys are amazing. God God is doing beautiful things on our times. Yes. Yes. It's It's so good. Yeah, I'm... uh, this is uh i don't know i I learned so much whenever you know you're here and i love that you said you know like you don't need to have a book no you you just need to have a story and trust that god is doing something with that story and in your life and take action and do it in faith Mm. and those are the lessons we want to learn from and that's why you're here and that's yeah. why your husband will Amen. be here too. Yeah. You know, the will be more times to come. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much for your precious time. Thank okay. You. So, my friends, thank you for being here on this episode. You know, you can like, subscribe, share this episode with a friend. Go visit us at Christian Podcast We have streams in Spanish and in English. And we're Para la this gloria on. de Dios. <laughs> For the glory of God. Christian Podcast Latino. Yes. Love it. We'll see you guys on the next one. Ciao. Bye.